Hello everyone and welcome to Control Engineering and Control Theory Tutorials. In these tutorials we present real and applicable knowledge of control engineering, machine learning, optimization, robotics, mechatronics, etc. This particular video tutorial is dedicated to the problem of designing and modeling a state space feedback control algorithm in Simulink and MATLAB. The unique thing about this tutorial that makes it very special and completely different compared to a tons of video tutorials that you can find online is that in this video tutorial I teach how to combine a pole placement method that ensures that the poles of the system are at the precise locations with an integral control action that enables us to eliminate the steady state control error. That is, most of the video tutorials available online that cover a similar topic are focusing on the development of controllers that are based on either an optimal control such as an LQ control or a pole placement method. However, these video tutorials do not consider the problem of steady state system behavior. In practice, you always need to combine an optimal controller with an integral control action in order to eliminate the steady state error. To make the long story short, first I will briefly summarize the main topics that you will learn in this video tutorial. We will start with a simple test case shown over here. It's a mass spring damper system driven by the force F. Then we will develop a state space model of such a system given by the equations 2 and 3. Then we will add an integral controller to such a system and we will develop the so-called augmented system given by the equations 8 and 9. Then we will use the pole placement method to design the poles of this closed loop system and we will develop this block diagram. Once we have this block diagram we will go to Simulink and we will simulate such a feedback control system. And here are the results. If you double click over here, you can see the results of our simulation. What's happening over here? We have created a control system that will track a constant step signal. In practice, this means that I want this system to be stabilized at a specific position or a distance from the equilibrium point and I designed a feedback control system that only measures the position and that will achieve this performance. But before I start with the explanations I would like to briefly mention the following. It took me a significant amount of time, energy and planning to create this completely free video tutorial as well as almost 300 video tutorials that you can find on my YouTube page. And consequently, I kindly ask you to press the like and subscribe buttons. Thank you very much. Okay, let's start. As a test case, we consider the mass spring damper system shown over here. We have a point mass, M, that's driven by the force F. And then we have a damper and a spring. The damper constant is KD and the spring constant is KS. X is the distance from the equilibrium point. We developed a state space model of such a system and you can find the state space model by clicking over here. And in order to make this video as short as possible, I will just briefly summarize the state space model. First, we introduce the state space variables. x1 is equal to x and x2 is equal to x dot or it's equal to velocity. And after using the state space variables and by using seconds Newton's method, we obtain the following state space model given by the equation 2 and 3. And you can clearly see how the physical constants of the system enter our dynamics. Here is KS, here is mass, and here is mass again. Our goal is to design a controller that will make the output of the system denoted by Y track a constant reference signal. Let the reference signal be denoted by R. The reference signal is a desired output determined by the user. For example, in the case of our mass spring damper system, 
A reference signal can be a desired position of our mass with respect to the equilibrium point. For example, let us say that we want to drive this mass to 50 centimeters from the equilibrium point and we want to stabilize our mass at that position. That is, the goal is to determine the force F that will drive this system to the desired location and we want to stabilize the mass at that location. Let us mathematically formulate the control problem. The first step is to introduce the control error. The control error is also called the tracking error and is defined by the equation number four. Error is simply a difference between the reference signal and the output of the system. Then, the goal of the controller is to decrease this control error to zero and to do that as fast as possible. If you open any textbook on modern control and if you open the chapter covering the pole placement method or the linear quadratic regulator, you will come to the following conclusion. The pole placement method or the linear quadratic regulator that are often used in control practice are usually derived under the assumption that we want to steer the system to the zero equilibrium point. However, the practical problems are a little bit different. Usually we want to steer the system to the desired location that's not necessarily the equilibrium point. To make sure that we can achieve the desired control objective, we need to somehow modify our pole placement method or linear quadratic regulator. And we do that by adding an integral control action. The integral control action will make sure that the steady state error will converge to zero. We add an integrator by augmenting our original state space model with the state of the integral controller. Let us introduce a new variable denoted by xi. xi is defined as an integral of our control error. By taking the first derivative of the equation number 5, you, you obtain the equation number 6. Then, by substituting y for cx in the equation number 6, we obtain the equation number 7. Then, let us combine the equation number 7 with our state space equation. Consequently, we obtain the system of equations given by the equation number 8. These two equations can be written in the compact form given by the equation number 9. And furthermore, we can simply say that this is AA, this is BA, and this is BR. In this tutorial, we assume that the state vector of the augmented system XA is known. In our next tutorial, we will relax this assumption by introducing a state observer. That is, for the time being, let us not worry about observers and let us assume that the state of this augmented system is perfectly known. Under this assumption, we can design a state feedback controller that will place the poles of the closed loop system at the desired locations in the complex plane. For example, to place the poles at the desired locations, we can use the MATLAB function place. And I will explain that in the second part of this tutorial. The pole placement method designs a feedback control law given by the equation number 12. Let us decompose this control law and let us analyze it. The matrix K can be augmented, or better to say, partitioned as Kx and Ki. Then, by using the definition of our augmented state, given by this equation, we can obtain the equation number 14. And if we multiply this matrix by this vector, better to say these are the block matrices and block vectors, we obtain this equation. And finally, our control law has this form. This part is a state feedback, that is the state of the original system, and this part is the integral control. In the second part of this video tutorial, we will model and simulate the system in Simulink. 
But before we do that, it's very important to develop a block diagram of the system and the block diagram of the control algorithm. And here is the block diagram of the complete closed loop system. This part is our open loop state space equation. That is, this part corresponds to x dot is equal to ax plus bu. This is our output, and the output is equal to c times x. This feedback given over here is this part over here. And this global feedback over here, starting from y, going back to here, and then performing the computations, that is computing the error. Error is obviously r minus y. Then we integrate this error, and then we multiply the error by ki to obtain this term over here. And finally, once we have this part over here and this part over here, we can simply form our u according to this equation. And this is how you do it. That is, before even modeling the system in Simulink, it's very important to create this block diagram. Next, we will model the system in MATLAB and Simulink. The first step is to define the system parameters and the system matrices. Consequently, open MATLAB and type this script. First, I define the system parameters. They are KS, KD, and M. And I select 1, 0 0.1, and 10. Then, I define the system matrices A, B, C, and D. That is A, B, C, and D is equal to 0. And after doing that, I want to verify the open loop pulse. And consequently, I compute the eigenvalues of the matrix A. And let's see the result. OK, here the open loop pulse. We can see that the poles are almost on the imaginary axis. Practically, this means that the system is not damped. You shouldn't have such a system and you should not use such a system in practice. You need to dampen these poles. The next step is to create the augmented system such that we can assign the closed loop poles. Consequently, we need to create this state space model. We can do that by using these two code lines, 14 and 15. We define our AA and BA. Next, we need to choose the desired closed loop pole locations. I select them as follows. I have one pole at minus 2 and at 0 0.2 at the imaginary axis, minus 2 and minus 0 0.2 imaginary axis, and another pole is at minus 3. Okay. Next, we use the place command to place the closed loop poles at the desired locations. Consequently, I call the MATLAB function place. I specify my AA, BA, and I specify the desired closed loop poles. And let's see the results. Okay, here's my K matrix. And if I go back to my web page, here's the K matrix. And that's precisely the K matrix calculated by MATLAB over here. Before we proceed, we have to make sure that the poles of the closed loop system match the desired closed loop poles. We can do that by computing the eigenvalues of this matrix, AA minus BA times K. And let's see the result. Okay, here are the poles of the closed loop system. And we can see that these poles are exactly the desired closed loop poles. So everything is good. The MATLAB function place returns the control matrix K. And this control matrix K is the matrix given over here. To create 
The Simulink block diagram, we need to extract the matrices Kx and Ki. Consequently, we need to type these two lines. And let's extract Kx and Ki. Good. Here are the Kx. Next, let us create a Simulink model of our system. First, let's open Simulink. And let's create a blank model. The first step is to model the open loop dynamics. For that purpose, this block diagram is very useful. The open loop dynamics is this part over here. Consequently, let's model it in Simulink. First, I need an integrator. Here it is. Then, I need a sum. Here's the sum. Let's connect the ports. Over here, I need a times x. Consequently, I need a gain. Let's rotate this part over here. And let's adjust this gain. Look now what happens. If I type a here, you can see that Simulink can automatically recognize my A from MATLAB workspace, and that's the power of Simulink. Simulink can directly access matrices as well as other parameters from our MATLAB scripts and workspace. This gain should compute A times X, and over here it's very important to adjust this multiplication since we want to perform matrix multiplication. Click on OK. Then connect the ports. This is x dot over here and this is x. Next, let's connect this part over here. This is ax part. Next, we need b times u. To do that, we need a gain again. Here's our gain. Double click on gain and type b over here. Make sure that you adjust the multiplication and here's the b times u part. Okay, now we need c times x. Again, type gain, double click, and this is our c matrix. Click on OK. However, again, make sure that multiplication is properly set. connect the parts, and this is our output. Here we will stop for a second and we will double check all the blocks. Double click over here, make sure that this is B and that we perform, perform multiplication, good. Double click over here, matrix A, multiplication, perfect. And double click over here and make sure that we have matrix C and multiplication, perfect. Now, a good practice is to name the blocks. For example, you can name this line. This line is our x. This is our output. You can call this part, for example, y. By double clicking below, I'm having issues. However, I managed to do that. This is y. Next, let us form this part over here. To do that, we obviously need here a sum and we need to adjust the signs. Here we'll, we will have minus and you can also look back to our block diagrams and you will see that we have another minus over here. Consequently, we need to completely change this block. Minus, minus. Then we need to add over here a state feedback. To do that, we double click over here and we type gain, rotate this gain, double click and adjust the gain. This should be Kx matrix multiplication. We have x as a state feedback and consequently connect the output to the corresponding port of this block. Connect this part and you can call this signal as U. 
I don't like the fact that this output signal is hanging in the air and since eventually we will have to plot the results I will add here a scope block and I will connect the output to my scope block okay next we need to model this output feedback and we need to model this part to do that we need the sum block over here and I already created the sum block however I will erase this sum block and I will type sum not to confuse you so here is the sum block here I need to adjust the signs this should be minus and I simply need to connect this port to the output of the system here it is okay over here I need to add my step signal consequently I will type step and here's my step signal make the connection and adjust the step time to zero okay this is R and over here is obviously the output let us expand this part over here since we need to add two blocks over here and let's analyze our block diagram we need to add an integral over here in order to form this term over here consequently we will type integrator here's the integrator and let's name this signal as error okay finally we need to add the gain block ki let's do that over here type gain and over here type ki and make sure that the multiplication is correct connect the parts and that should be it you can double check everything for example by making sure that the matrices are properly entered and that all the multiplications are actually matrix multiplications and we are all set let's simulate this system we can simulate this system by clicking on run and let's hope that everything will be fine okay so far so good double click on our scope block and let's see the results voila here it is we are able to perfectly track one that is the output of the system after maybe 3.5 seconds approaches the desired output that is the reference signal that's equal to one let's change this reference signal and let's say that we want final value to be equal to five let's run the simulation and let's see what happens go over here double click on the block and let's see the results ah perfect we can see a very nice response the response is very well damped and again we can see that after 3.5 seconds we achieved the desired value okay that would be all for today i hope that you like this video if you like the videos i create please press the like and subscribe buttons thank you very much and have a nice day